The highly anticipated Dead Island 2 is finally here, after nine years of development. The game is the third significant entry in the Dead Island series, created by Dam Buster Studios and released by Deep Silver, which is a follow-up to the 2011 title Dead Island. As for the gameplay, you go through several neighborhoods, encounter other survivors, and come into contact with a lot of zombies, which are quite dangerous and challenging to kill. Dead Island 2's plot is set in Los Angeles and San Francisco, where zombies have taken over and no one can enter or leave to aid the survivors. Although the game is rather simple, there are a lot of intricacies and hurdles, especially if you're a total newbie. You may customize your gameplay, create your own goods, and many more things that you might not be aware of using skill cards and blueprints. Therefore, whether you're an experienced player or just getting started, the following seven Dead Island 2 tips will help you play the game more skillfully than before, locate more items, and comprehend the game better. Starting with number seven, collect supplies. There is a lot of looting in almost every region, which is one of the first things you'll notice. As you explore, you will come upon a variety of weaponry, from makeshift to more sophisticated. Be careful to take the time to look out, because the greatest weapons are frequently concealed in boxes and closed chests. While common materials like scrap are easily located everywhere, rare elements like chemicals and medical supplies are more difficult to locate and collect. There are lots of documents, blueprints, keys, weapons, chests, and crafting supplies to be found. While not all of these are crucial, things like weapons, chests, and blueprints have a significant impact on how you play the game. Always take the time to check every drawer, container, etc. in each new location for crafting materials because they are all necessary for improving your weapons. For upgrading your weapons in Dead Island 2, crafting supplies and money are also crucial, but you don't need to worry about them because they are absolutely abundant. In fact, they get respawned pretty often. Keep a watch out for wallets carrying cash as well, as cash is necessary for upgrades and repairs. Be careful to quickly scan the area after eliminating a large group of zombies to gather any supplies or money they may have left behind. Sell some of the supplies to the next merchant you come across for some additional money and to clear up storage space if you discover that you're dropping items from searching containers or are unable to pick them up because you've maxed them up. This will help you get the best value out of the items you don't even need. Moving on to number six, use the environment. If you play Dead Island 2 strategically, the surroundings can be used as a harmful and lethal weapon against hordes of zombies. You can kill zombies in a variety of ways, like by leading them into poisonous chemicals, electrical fences, or by lighting them on fire. Additionally, you have a fire pit where you may shoot zombies as you choose if you're on a roof and there is glass underneath them. The switches may be used to construct enormous death traps that zombies can walk through. Be aware of dangers like exploding barrels and electrified water and take advantage of them. In order to defend yourself from zombies, you can also build traps and barriers using the environment. With so many jerry cans around that contain water, gasoline, and caustic X, there are many options for you to explore. You can also employ additional dangers to assist eliminate the zombie. You can spray water on a loose electrical line, for instance, and the electricity will spread. The right mindset for this kind of environmental playthrough may take some time to develop, but if you use it from the beginning, you can develop the habit pretty early in the game. Moving on to number 5, use dodge. You can choose one of the two defensive abilities, block or dodge, in the early stages of the game. You cannot have both of them because they share same button, but you may switch between them at any time. A poorly timed dodge may not provide you a counterattack phase, but it will still get you out of path and position you for a counterattack, which can be launched by blocking or dodging right before an adversary assault. This technique is excellent for crowd control or while you're in the middle of a battle, since it prevents you from being attacked by other zombies or taking elemental damage while you're in the counter animation. This is extremely helpful, and you should use it frequently because it enables you to deal a lot of damage with a single takedown attack. Additionally, as the game progresses, you'll find a variety of skill cards, such as the Survivor card and Safety First, that enhance the counterattack phase by giving you more health, increased damage, and other advantages. 
Although it takes longer, fighting in this manner is often the best strategy in the game as bigger zombies like crushers take a few dodges to really wear down. Moving on to number 4, Fast Travel. In the early stages of the game, it feels amazing to explore every single object that has been included in Dead Island 2's enormous open environment. But as time goes on, walking even for a quick side mission gets tiresome. Early on, the zones aren't particularly huge, but as the map gradually expands, it gets fairly chaotic to go barefoot everywhere. This is where the quick travel feature, which is accessible to you when you first reach the Venice Beach, acts like it would in any other open world game. To keep your weapons and ammunition for when you truly need them, use the rapid travel method. You can look at the maps in safe rooms and homes like Emma's, choose a location to fast travel to, and that's all. You should use this mechanism for finishing side missions because it doesn't require any additional goods. It's a rare mechanism that the game itself doesn't really emphasize. Because some places can only be accessed when you buy specific items from vendors, such breakers or other electronic equipment, fast travel will make it simple for you to go from the cellars to the restricted corridors. Moving on to number 3, Find Blueprints. When you're following the main story, additional workbenches will be available with blueprints that can be utilized to create various survival and fighting gear. Traders that are prepared to sell the blueprints for different weapons and materials can easily be found within several of the safe houses. Other workbenches could have more too, although you might need to directly purchase certain designs. It's always worthwhile to veer off the usual track in search of novel workbenches and any blueprints they may contain. At first, this could seem like a time waster, but later in the game, it certainly helps a lot with survival and makes it simple to manufacture new weapons. After playing the game for a while, you'll obtain firearms that let you use lead to kill zombies instead of coming near enough to use a melee strike. Vendors start selling blueprints for the various ammunition types once firearms are unlocked, enabling you to make them in workbenches. You'll discover that certain vendors also offer blueprints, including unique blueprints for creating ammunition for firearms, in addition to crafting supplies, weapons, and other things. Blueprints are the greatest way to maintain a large supply of ammo because they are quite simple to build and don't take a lot of resources. Even though you may still obtain ammunition while exploring, it is far less common than other types of materials and also more risky because you can be caught off totally unprepared. Moving on to number 2, Prioritize Weapons. The melee weapons in Dead Island 2 come in a wide range of sizes and forms, and while most of them will initially be at your level, they won't get better as your character level ups. When you first start, you'll cycle through a variety of low-level and unique weaponry, giving you the chance to identify the ones you deal with the most. These weapons also become useless as you swiftly level up, since they lack the sheer power to defeat more advanced zombies. By selling and scrapping these unwanted weapons, you can easily earn some additional cash without any effort. When it comes to selling and disassembling firearms for money and materials, this pile is sometimes a fantastic place to start with. When you begin getting rare and superior weapons, you should improve the weapon you are most comfortable with rather than selling it. This is due to the fact that utilizing a weapon you are more adept at handling is far more useful than owning one. As long as it's below your current level and you have enough money, you may match level any weapon by going to any workshop. Don't buy level matching weapons until you're a few levels away from your favorite weaponry in order to truly justify the expense, as the stronger weapons in the game may cost tens of thousands of dollars. Finally, moving on to number one, gather fuses. Some of the best places to get rare crafting supplies and quality weaponry are hidden behind doors that require fuses to unlock. Fuse usage isn't much stressed at the beginning of the game, but they are quite useful later on. Fuse boxes are there constantly throughout your game no matter where you look. Fuses function as the keys to one of the best items and weaponry in the game. They can be used to open up optional catches containing supplies for crafting, money, and weaponry. There is one open fuse box in almost every home and safe house. You can complete the whole story without using a fuse, but those fuse boxes are indicated on the map, and some of the game's greatest goods are locked in boxes in those locations. Fuses must be purchased from vendors, and to be completely honest, they are pretty pricey. 
you can stock up to three fuses with you at a time. Therefore, be sure to make the vendor your first stop before heading back to a safe house to load up on fuses. You can easily find them on vendors like Carlos, who resides at Emma's home. Although his supply is limited, it will eventually respond again as you visit again. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it so far. If so, then subscribe to the channel and like the video in order to see more gaming content like this in future. Comment down below how was your experience playing it and what video do you need next. I'll see you all in the next video. Till then, bye bye